Welcome to Azure in 5 Minutes. This is Woody Walton, and in this technical presentation, I'll be showing you how to change the service administrator in your Azure subscription. First, we need to define what a service administrator is. And so a service administrator is a property that's exclusive to each Azure subscription, and it's an individual who can log into the management or the developer portal and manage the subscription. So, for example, they can create new VMs and resources, and this is the same capability that a co-administrator has, but they do have some additional things that they can they can do, such as assigning a different uh, service administrator. Uh, it's assigned initially by the account administrator who purchases the Azure subscription. Uh, so when they first log in and sign up for an Azure account and, and subscriptions, they actually by default are the service administrator, and then they can in fact change that. Uh, one point of note is that the service administrator can work in the management portal, but they can't see billing details inside of the billing portal. The other thing is, is we'll see in the demonstration, it can only be changed in the billing portal, and it can only be one individual. So you may uh, assign co-administration rights to a number of different parties, but only one individual can be the service administrator. And it's also used by Microsoft Support as a check when migrating content between two subscriptions. So you have a source subscription and a destination subscription. And we'll go into that in more detail in the demo. Here we are in the Azure Management Portal. And I've already navigated down to Settings and the Subscriptions tab. And you can see that I have two subscriptions that I'm working with here in the console right now. Now, if I click on the Administrators tab under Settings, I can see all of the different service administrators and co-administrators for any and all subscriptions that I currently have filtered. So if we look at this subscriptions dropdown, I have selected all of my subscriptions. And so I see that I have Joe Gallo as a co-administrator and then myself as the service administrator for both, both subscriptions. Now, when it comes to impacting changes, if I select Joe, for instance, he's a co-administrator, maybe I want to make him a service administrator. And if I click edit here, you'll notice that it says edit co-administrator. So the dialog isn't designed to affect changes to the service administrator for the subscription. Now I could go ahead and add Joe as a co-administrator for one of the other subscriptions, but I don't have the ability to change his email address or add him as a different role in, in, in the case of service administrator. So I'll go ahead and cancel out of this. Likewise, if I select the service administrator and click edit, this field is not editable, nor can I uncheck WoodyWalton at Hotmail.com from the service administrator role because this dialog is completely and totally designed around enabling co-administration. So where does that leave us? Well, what we have to do is we have to step outside of the management portal and go into the account portal, some people call it the billing portal, to affect this change. So under the subscriptions dropdown, I can go to manage your account. What this will do is it will take us to a screen where we can select individual subscriptions and execute certain actions on them and see some information. We see that it's come up here and I have my demo subscription and my Visual Studio Ultimate subscription. I'll click on the demo subscription and we'll drive down to the subscription overview. And you'll notice that uh, there are some choices or options over here on the right hand side. Additionally, it will give you the information as to who the account administrator is and who the service administrator is. Now, the account administrator is always the user principal who signed up for the account on Azure.com, and that really can't be changed. Now, the service administrator is an editable field here, and that's changed through going to Edit Subscription Details. So right here, I could go ahead and change this to Woody Walton at Live.com, for example, and we can also change the name of subscription. So if, if, for instance, I wanted to name it test, I could change it right here. And that's nice because, you know, if you're managing several subscriptions, giving them names that make sense to you and makes it easy to organize. Okay, so we'll give it a moment here. All right, so the change has been impacted. The subscription name has changed to test. And if we scroll down here, we'll see that the service administrator has now been changed to WoodyWalton at live.com. If we were to return to the management console, you should see that that, uh, that subscription is no longer available to me as Woody Walton at Hotwell.com because I'm no longer the service administrator. Additionally, if we use the subscriptions dropdown, although this shows up, it's simply because we haven't refreshed. So if I refresh the page here,
we see that the demo subscription or now test subscription has been removed from the dropdown. So that's how you change the service administrator. But what's important is to understand why this change is necessary. So if we reflect back on the opening, remember I said that if you wanted to do a migration from one subscription to another, you have to have the service administrator be the same user principle. In fact, it has to be the same user principle authenticated the same way. In the case of Woody Walton at Hotmail.com, if I had that both as a Microsoft account and as an organizational account, I would have to make sure that I authenticated against both of those with both the organizational accounts or both the Microsoft accounts or live IDs as they used to be called. Scenarios for partners where this is important is, let's say, for instance, you stood up a trial for your customer and you tested some things out and they decided they wanted to roll with Azure, but you wanted to sell it to them via the Azure and Open program. Well, there's no trial for Azure and Open, so what you would need to do is make a new open subscription, change the service administrators to be the same thing, and then you can call Microsoft Support and they will move things over. Now, it's limited in terms of what can be moved over. Not everything translates, but the lion's share of the types of solutions that SMBs are leveraging in Azure can be moved over. Some exceptions might be some of the uh, SQL Web Services, also uh, Azure Site Recovery and uh, Recovery Storage Vaults and things like that can't be migrated. But that's an example. Another example is, say for instance, you're managing a solution for a customer and then they decide they want to own that subscription themselves. They want to do things themselves and you know they sever ties with you. In that case, they could create a new subscription, give the service administrator the same email address in both, and then you could call Microsoft and they would conduct the migration for you. It's key to keep in mind, too, that you're not really at any risk here because we're not actually moving things inside of Azure. We're moving pointers inside of Azure. So it's called a soft migration, but that's how you do it. Change the service administrator in Azure.